Okay, I was just gonna go through some of the basic components of a hive with you, and also the tools as beekeepers that we use. So we've got our very important hive tool. There are a couple of different kinds that you can use. It doesn't matter which one, as long as they're nice and strong and they can do what we need to do. So we can crack open the hive and we can lift up frames and scrape off wax. Also very important to have a fully functional well-lit smoker to smoke our bees, to calm them down. So this is just a standard, what we call Langstroth hive, which is a standard hive used in New Zealand. This is our hive lid to secure everything down. If it's really windy, you can secure these more by putting maybe a rock on top or even putting around a hive strap to keep it down. But usually they do a very good job. This is actually an insulated hive lid. This has just got some polystyrene in it just to keep it a little bit warmer for the bees, to keep them a little bit more insulated. This is what we call our hive mat. It's still called a hive mat because um, they used to be made physically of matting, which they sometimes still are, but usually now they're just made of um, wood and we still call them a, a hive mat. These are um, specifically designed to have a little bee space between them, so when you put them onto the hive, it doesn't squash the bees in the centre. Next we have a queen excluder. So as the name suggests, the queen, because she's bigger, she cannot go through these slats, but the normal worker bees can. There's a couple of different kinds of these. These, just like the hive mat, has a little gap so that the bees aren't squashed. There are also other versions that are just a lot thinner and go between the hives. So these are put on between, if you wanted to put a honey super on the top, these could go between, so you would trap the queen in whatever box you wanted, usually down the bottom, but you can trap her wherever you like. Just make sure you know where she is, because she won't be able to get through here. So when we open up the hive, we come to our frames. So the frames are what the bees are living on. The queen will be laying in the cells of wax, and that's where all of the bees reside. So there's a couple of different versions of frames that you can use in your hive. As long as they are removable, which is law in New Zealand, that the frames have to be able to re be removed from the hive so they can be checked for disease. So this is what we call a wire wax frame. So this is a wooden edging. And you can see here there's a very thin piece of wax that has been embedded into the wire. So this is a frame that has wood on the outside and plastic insert so this is fully plastic all the way through now this has been coated with wax which is very important you don't want to put straight plastic into a hive it needs to be able to smell like wax so the bees will accept it and start to put their own wax onto it and draw it out and make cells this is the fully plastic version so a little bit stronger so plastic all the way around the outside and the internal and remembering that this is again coated with wax so the bees accept it so once they've accepted it and it's in the hive they will then start putting their own wax onto it and draw out the cells, which is what they've done through here. And these are the cells that the queen will lay eggs in. The bees can also put pollen or honey into these cells, always the same cells, and they can be used for many different things within the hive. So this is, like I mentioned, this is a Langstroth box, and it can fit 10 frames perfectly. So we usually recommend that people use nine frames, because once the bees are established in here. They like to fill everything up with wax and propolis, and these frames actually become covered in wax. And sometimes it's a lot easier if you only have nine frames to have a little gap in here so that when you lift the frame up, you're not scraping all the bees off. So if you've come to your hive and you've realized that it needs to be fed, you may need to take some frames out and put in an internal feeder. So take out two empty frames and pop your feeder in in the space that they were. If you don't have enough room in your hive to put in an internal feeder, or if you don't want to use one, that's fine. You can use a top feeder. And as the name suggests, it just fits on the top of your frames, on the top of your hive, and you pour the sugar syrup in the top, and the bees can come up through the internal ladder and feed on the syrup without drowning. So as you can see, this is our Langstroth box, and it's sitting on a floorboard. This floorboard, is a solid floorboard made from wood. There are many different kinds of floorboards that are on the market now. There's variations of this wooden one, some of them with a little bit of mesh, which is beneficial in summertime if it's too hot. There's also some that are 
majority mesh as well, but still with our wood outside. There are also a majority of plastic floorboards on the market now, most of which come with vents at the bottom. The bonus with these are they're really easy to close up the hive if you need to move it. There are other versions of ventilated plastic floorboards. So these hives also come with trays. So when the rower fall off the bees, they can be counted in these trays. And they also use to close the vents up. So if it's too cold in winter time and you'd like to close the vents to keep the hive warmer, these are excellent. So all of these can be bought from a general beekeeping store. Um, and if you'd like to make your own, that's perfectly fine as well. Just be sure to look up the exact measurements because these are all made with what's called a bee space in mind. So everything that fits onto the hive, the boxes, the frames and everything, they all come with the bee space between so that bees can move in between the different components of the hive and not be squashed. So a bee space is very important if you want to make your own gear.